Do you see this wicket? It's really not that big a deal. It was when Janaman Milan was dismissed in the fifth over of the first ODI between South Africa and India this year. It doesn't really mean that much because South Africa recovered okay and they ended up with 296 runs and they beat India with that total. But this wicket is something else. It is the only time that Jasprit Bumrah has taken a wicket in the power play since the start of 2020 in 282 ODI balls. I mean, that's a bit odd. When you hear Bumrah is averaging over 200 in anything, it sounds weird. And being that before he was averaging 27, there does seem to be something going on. The thing is, it isn't just him. It is all Indian power play guys. They just haven't taken wickets since 2020. It's now getting weird at how high this average actually is. So while Bumrah might be the worst, it's incredible how bad India are doing in the power play of ODIs. Since the start of 2020, they are averaging the highest of any team in the power play with the ball. We are talking piss taking numbers here. They're almost double Zimbabwe's power play bowlers. And sure, Zimbabwe bowlers have probably had easier batters to go up against. But unless India has been playing against a world 11 I'm unaware of, averaging 100 is disgustingly bad. And guess what? It's not just the lack of wickets, they're also getting humped in that time. They're the only team floating with a runner ball in that period. This is just epically shit and confusing as hell. The Indian bowlers have basically stopped appearing in the first 10 overs of a game. They're not even phoning it in. They're yelling from another room to get their mate to send a WhatsApp. Take this last match against the West Indies, where they rolled them for 176, and you would assume that that meant that it was carnage up the top. But in fact, the West Indies were a slow 39 runs after their first 10 overs, but for only one wicket. If you're the West Indies, you probably want at least seven or eight more runs on that to feel a little bit better. But that is a fairly normal start. And this is the same West Indies who only recently, Ireland was completely bullying their top order. I just think you would assume that at least one of these seamers would have stumbled into more wickets. And it gets actually far worse than this because there are three bowlers not on this list at all because they haven't taken a wicket and don't have an average. Saini Taku and Prashith Krishna have 264 balls between them in the power play without a wicket. It's actually quite a remarkable pattern at a certain point. It's as if on the way out to bowl, India are picking up a volleyball by accident. In fact, the only player I could find that was doing okay was Mohamed Siraj. He's only delivered 30 balls, but he took Shy Hope's wicket in this last game. And when you look at the period before, they certainly weren't doing anywhere near as bad in the power play as India currently have. So it's stunning that in this last two years and change, it's all gone so poorly. That's not to say that India was ever a great power play bowling team. They were always a little bit worse than average. It's not been their strength in modern ODI cricket for a very long time now. Compared to most teams, they're just not someone who bowls that well at the top. And my first thought was, I wonder if it was just because they make their pitches a lot better for batting at home. They like high scoring ODIs and they score a lot. But when you look at their home games from 2012 to 2019, their bowlers still struggle compared to the opposition. And that's with India having next level opening batting combinations available to them and great bowling as well. And also the Indian batter's strength has been not losing wickets in the power play. That's kind of their entire game plan. Start slow, milk the middle overs fairly strongly with set farm hands, and then kick off in happy hour. They're the third best team when it comes to the opening 10 overs average, but the third worst when it comes to bowling in the first 10 overs. Only Scotland and Bangladesh are worse. And this isn't a marginal thing. There are plenty of teams just a lot better than India. So they're the third worst bowling in the power play and the third best batting in the power play. That's an odd place to be. And when you bring them together, it actually still means that they're slightly above par. That's mostly just because how good their batting has been. And this was all for a good period of Indian ODI cricket as well. You know, before Boomer's average went over 200. India were the dominant ODI side over that period when you look at wins and losses. And it's not even really close. Even if they just weren't that good at bowling in the power play. But they did have one player who's pretty good in the power play. And that is, unsurprisingly, Jasprit Bumrah. He was by far India's best regular option. Bhuvesh Kumar might have delivered the most balls of any human, in fact, in the power play in this period. And Shami was a pretty good option too. But Bumrah was the sixth best bowler by average in this period. And it's worth looking at the guys around him. Jimmy Anderson, who's probably an underrated ODI bowler because England never really built a team around him. Mohamed Irfan was like nothing we had ever seen before. And then you get even more interesting. The Matt Henry and Trent Bolt combination helped New Zealand into a couple of World Cup finals. And on either side of Boomer, you've got Chris Wokes and Mitchell Stark. Wokes was England's best ODI bowler until Joffre Archer came in to help him. And Mitchell Stark was the best white ball seamer in the world until Boomer probably took his title. 
So for Boomer to drop off from this company is quite a big deal. But what about the others? Well, a year ago, Booby looked like one of the best white ball openers in the world. He was nearly unplayable at times against England. But since then, he's looked a little bit cooked. But when you do look at his ODI record, he's just never been as good there as he has been in tests and T20. Umesh Yadav always struggled in the power play of one day internationals, which is a bit weird because he's actually fairly good in the power play of the IPL when it comes to taking wickets. And so that leaves us with Mohamed Shami. He is a weird bowler in that you would assume he'd be nearly unhittable with a new white ball, but he's not. He's always struggled with it in the IPL until marginally improving over the last few years. Put it this way, in 2016, 17, and 18, he took two wickets from 168 balls in the IPL power play while going at 11 runs and over. So if you look at him early career compared to late career, he certainly improved. But a bowler of his talent should certainly be taking wickets at better than 43 runs in the IPL power play. But the other thing that makes even less sense is as he has improved as an IPL bowler up top, he's fallen off a cliff with India. And his numbers were quite good before. You might expect him to be slightly better than an average of 32, but you would take it in tandem with Bumrah. 75 is you know, shockingly high again. Because it was all three bowlers, I thought it was less likely to be bad luck. And it's always possible that a, because they haven't bowled that much, a few bad decisions have gone against them. So what I looked up was ESPN Crick Info's control factor. And over the last two and a half years, it has been actually slightly tougher to bat in the power play than normal. And in that time, the Indian seamers have actually troubled the batters less than before. In fact, far less when you take into account that the other bowlers around the world have been troubling the batters more. Shami is only marginally worst, but Bhuvi and Bumrah are way off the mark. Their horrendous averages might have a little bit of poor luck with, let's say, drop catches or LBWs not going their way. But it's very clear that neither of those bowlers are troubling the batters anywhere near what they did before 2020. With Bhuvi on his way out anyway, and Shami being very weird to me, as I've never understood why he's just not better with the new white ball, I thought I'd have a little bit of a look just at Bumrah to see if anything has changed there. I figured it hadn't, because he's Jasper Bumrah and he's really good and he doesn't really need to make any changes. But for fun, I ran his numbers through the machine just to have a look at the length, and um, Jasper Bumrah has completely changed his bowling in One Day Internationals. When he was great, he bowled 50% of his balls on a good length and 30% back of it. Now it's almost 50% on that short length and only 38% on the good one. He's just gone way shorter. And I'm not sure if it's a defensive move as he is usually far more frugal the shorter he goes. But this is just not working in the power play for him. And the thing is that Bumrah is actually struggling in one day internationals everywhere. This is him by splits. Before he was, to use Cricket Australia's favorite word, an elite wicket taking option in all three periods of the game. Currently he's a liability in all three periods of the game. It's just a lot louder in the power play. Maybe in part because he's had no one else stepping up there as well. The thing is, I figured I would have noticed if Jasper Bruma was terrible since the beginning of the year 2020 in all cricket. So I looked up his numbers right across the board and he's been really good in tests. Maybe not as good as he's normally been, but he's averaging 27. I mean, he's fine. His T20 international numbers are really strong and he's been marginally better at taking wickets in the IPL as well. The only odd one out here is One Day Internationals, where he has stunk up the joint. And because he's been so good in everything else, I worried less. But because India have always had this problem, and it's now become comically bad, I worry slightly more. A while back I described good T20 power play bowlers as like attacking defenders in football. Bowling in white ball cricket is the defensive part of our game, and that's certainly how teams talk about it behind closed doors. And so having a defender who can shape the match is a really important thing. And the earlier they take wickets, the more chance you are of winning the game. Let's just go back to this list from before. One reason we always underestimate New Zealand coming into big tournaments is, well, the first reason is because they're New Zealand. But the second reason is they often don't make that many big scores. But their bowlers regularly take wickets at the top, meaning that their batters don't have to make those huge scores that some of the other countries do. That's why New Zealand have been in the last two World Cup finals. England's biggest changes to their one-day international team were really in batting and bowling in the middle. But when your team averages more than 300 runs a game and Chris Wokes and Jofra Archer take early wickets, it's very hard to beat you. And Bumrah is in this company on talent. In fact, he used to be in this company on performance. And it's hard to see if any of the other Indian seamers are really perfectly suited to it. I kind of give up on Shami just because I don't understand him as a white ball bowler, but it's very possible that he could go back to that. I suppose Mohamed Siraj is someone in the future, although he's not been a particularly good new ball bowler in the IPL. Deepak Chahar is almost a specialist, not sure they're going to go into a World Cup with him in the side. 
And Umesh Yadav should be mentioned because he's one of the better power play wicket takers in the IPL. And I will remain a believer in Boovie until the end. But there's just no one kind of obvious there, is there? One thing I would say is that forget India as a whole and just look at Bumrah. There is a possibility that he's phoning it in for ODIs at the moment. Not for bad reasons, but he's doing a lot of work right now. He's an all-format bowler who's had some interesting injuries over the last few years. Abdominal strain, ankle, and bad back. If you throw in an elbow there, he's got the fast bowling quadrilla. And you would have to say that during this period, the World Test Championship and the two T20 World Cups had to be the main thoughts in his mind outside the IPL. It makes sense that if anything was going to slip, it would be one-day internationals. But Jasper Pumra doesn't struggle, does he? His numbers since coming into this sport are awe-inspiring. His combination of action, pace, and skill is so unique that as long as he can stay fit, he should dominate for, well, as long as he wants. And he is dominating in the IPL, tests, and T20 internationals. It's just that in one day, he's not quite at his best. It might be his length, or the fact that he's just not putting in as much as he used to. But India need an attacking defender in the next World Cup, which is now just over 12 months away. In fact, India just need wickets in the power play, so they stop looking worse than Zimbabwe. But for me, I think when in doubt, always back Boomerang.